Welcome back. Now it's time for Forum Daily's weekly market update with Catherine Murray, host of The Buck Stops Here. Take it away, Catherine. Thanks, Nima. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your weekly market recap. I am Catherine Murray. Well, we are seeing the markets trade lower following 1% declines yesterday, driven by the U.S. Fed raising rates by 75 basis points. That was expected, but perhaps what was not expected and therefore impacting the markets negatively today and yesterday is the hawkish tone coming out from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, indicating that they are not going to stop raising rates. In fact, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that there's a risk, if you look back historically, at loosening prematurely. They also indicated that the terminal rate is going to be higher than previously anticipated. The terminal rate, in other words, the rate at which they'll stop, is now looking to be 4.6% in 2023, versus 4%. That's a big change. And I think it's what people and companies need to uh, wrap their heads around in terms of what their costs are going to be on a debt level perspective, and also the kind of pressure that puts on the valuations of risk assets. And that's why you're seeing this repricing occur in the market. Importantly here as well, and this is going to get a lot of attention, is we are seeing an inversion of the yield curve, not to be boring here, but it's basically when the 10-year yield is lower than the two-year yield. The two years at about 4.1%, the 10 years at 3.6%. That's the fixed income market telling you that they are very much anticipating a recession. Normally, if you were to go out 10 years, you would expect things would be optimistic and better and therefore a little bit higher on the rate front. That's not what they're telling us right now. They actually think the fixed income market and other investors as well that the Fed is going to go too far, too fast in raising rates and cause uh, a hard landing. That, those are the words that are being talked about right now. So that's something to know. The other aspect, of course, when we think about the equity markets and why they continue to decline is because investors are believing that uh, with a recession and a more difficult backdrop, that the earnings estimates of all these companies and the S&P as well as the Dow and the TSX have to be revised lower. So you lower the earnings, you perhaps put a lower uh, multiple, and therefore you've got lower valuations. So that's kind of where we stand right now. I would also just point out from a central bank perspective that eight other central bankers around the world are also raising rates. We've just heard from uh, the BOE raising rates, South Africa, Switzerland, Norway, Indonesia, and even the Philippines, all raising rates. Now, what we are talking about really is the, the narrative in the marketplace is very much on the bear side. And in fact, there's an institutional survey that takes place, only 17% are, uh, are bullish. And there's the uh, bull versus bear spread. It's the worst we've seen. In other words, more bears than bulls. Um, then in the dot-com era and even during the pandemic and as close to the levels we saw, during the great financial crisis. So again, bottom line, investors are fearful that the Fed is going to go too far too fast and cause a hard landing. I'll just give you the slight small bull case scenario, uh, which some strategists are pointing out that the trend growth is still strong, expecting 7.1% in back half of 2022 for the S&P 500 earnings and 9% in the back half of 2023. So not bad growth. We'll see if that's actually what will happen given the inflation concerns, et cetera. Um, we are seeing the TSX also trend lower, of course. Uh, the Canadian dollar is lower versus the U.S. dollar. In fact, the worst levels we've seen for the Canadian dollar since July of 2020. The focus here, of course, is on inflation, CPI coming in at 7%, less than expected, uh, and down from 7.6%. But food prices are up over 10%, the fastest pace in over 40 years. The question, of course, here in Canada is, again, whether or not we will be able to orchestrate a soft landing. We know that the BOC is going to continue to also raise rates. And that, of course, has an impact on consumer demand and also, of course, the housing market. What I find so interesting, though, is that even though we're also raising rates, the Canadian dollar is continuing to trend lower. That's the market telling you that they are quite fearful. You can see this always playing out in currencies um, of the Canadian economy. And of course, the fact that we don't use our energy resources to the degree that we could. In terms of stocks to watch, uh, I would just point out uh, in the steel space, Stelco, that's up by about 10%. Um, they're doing an issue or bid at $35. Eli Lilly is up by 3.5%. It was upgraded over at UBS. Um, and then also we have a bit, a, a bit of a mixed uh, picture as it relates to the housing stocks uh, with Lennar showing some good strength up by about 2%, but KB Homes a little bit weaker on the order front. And also I would just also uh, point out that DRI, Darden Restaurants, 
um, saw softer sales at the Olive Garden and uh, Longhorn Steakhouse. Nima, I'll leave it there. A lot of stocks to watch and a bit of a mixed picture. Back to you. All right, thanks for that, Catherine. Again, that was Catherine Murray, host of The Buck Stops here, which airs Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, only on the News Forum Network.